This is the new Google Pixel 7 Pro. And while we've known quite a bit about it since it was clearly revealed back in May at IO, we now have all the details we've been waiting for on Google's latest hardware. So let's talk about what Google has delivered with the Pixel 7 Pro and a few thoughts I have on this phone after a few days of use. If you've ever laid hands on the Pixel 6 Pro, you kind of know what to expect here. The main differences in the build quality come down to the metal chassis around the cameras and a less pronounced curve on the screen. That's kind of it. While not flat this time around, the curvature of the sides of the front panel are a little bit less pronounced and I do like that. I got used to it eventually on the Pixel 6 Pro, but I still prefer flat screens on my smartphones. The Pixel 7 Pro is definitely not flat, but the curve on the sides feels a lot less intrusive while still giving it the higher end look that Google's after. The screen underneath that curved glass is pretty similar to last year's version, coming in at 6.7 inches, a QHD plus resolution, and sat side by side, there's not a massive difference in the look and feel of the 6 Pro and the 7 Pro, and I think that's exactly what Google needed to do this year. Apple has honed the yearly iteration upgrade, and Google should follow suit. With the Pixel 7 Pro, it just feels like things were refined a bit, and they didn't do too much to overhaul what was already working in that phone. After getting set up and putting my SIM card in the 7 Pro, I immediately felt right at home. We've known this already, but under the hood, we're looking at the Tensor G2 SoC, 12 gigs of RAM, and 128, 256, or 512 gigs of storage, starting at the same $899 from last year. With the same 5,000 milliamp hour battery inside, this phone should have great battery life with the Tensor G2 reportedly being more efficient at everyday tasks versus last year's Pixel 6 Pro. When it comes to the cameras, the story is largely the same as last year as well. Uh, from a hardware standpoint, we have a 50 megapixel wide angle, 12 megapixel ultra wide, and a 48 megapixel 5X telephoto lens to leverage. And around front, the Pixel 7 Pro and Pixel 7 share the same 10.8 megapixel 93 degree front facing camera that comes with face unlock for the first time since the Pixel 4. After using that face unlock for a couple of days now, I'm really happy with the results. Though it's not as secure and won't work for like banking apps, it does get your phone unlocked quickly and leaves you only having to rely on your fingerprint for the most secure of items. And that fingerprint scanner feels upgraded too, registering far faster than we saw with the earlier builds of the Pixel 6 Pro last year. This year, as always, software improvements are definitely front and center, and these new Pixels have quite a few great new features, specifically in the camera department. Notably, Google showed off cinematic video, bringing portrait mode blurring to 24 FPS video, and they've also included a new macro mode on the Pixel 7 Pro that utilizes the ultra-wide lens around back. Using it on random items here and there over the past few days, I've been able to get some photos from just a few centimeters away from different objects and the detail is pretty amazing. On the opposite end of that spectrum, these new AI and machine learning algorithms for digital zooming are really impressive, allowing the 5X optical zoom of the Pixel 7 Pro to extend all the way out to 30X with some really staggering results. Oh, and there's the ability to unblur photos taken on any phone in your Google Photos library, not just those taken on Pixels. It's coming to Pixel 7 and 7 Pro via Google Photos, and this feature could be a game changer if it works well on older photos half as well as Google has described. I've had good luck with a few photos here and there, but I'll need to really dig back and find some truly old blurry pics to make this thing a real test here. Now, while the macro, zoom, and unblur features are pretty great so far, the cinematic video is definitely a limited use feature for right now. If you stick to one person and don't move around too much, it looks okay, but if you bounce back and forth between subjects in the room and move around that room a little bit, the effect falls apart pretty quick and it's not really usable. I'd reckon it'll get better over time, but for now, just stick to the video camera in its normal state, which is to say, really, really good. Google has really stepped up with HDR and the quality of video on the Pixel 7 Pro and the results are unmistakably better than before. Dynamic range looks amazing, the audio capture is really solid, and overall, taking video on the Pixel 7 is finally starting to approach what Apple manages to pull off with their own iPhones. And on that same front, I've already noticed a huge improvement of the dynamic range and low light capabilities of the Pixel 7 Pro for photos. While the 6 Pro wasn't a slouch by any stretch of the imagination, the 7 Pro takes all of it to a whole new level with insane HDR correction that makes it dead simple to properly capture any scene you're looking at with great clarity and balance with just a point 
and a click. One other thing I've been really happy with early on is performance. Though Tensor G2 isn't this massive year-over-year -year upgrade versus the Tensor G1, one of the big improvements I'm seeing at this point is in graphics and in gaming. Where the Pixel 6 Pro is limited to medium graphics settings with most games that I tend to play, the Pixel 7 Pro lets me crank things all the way up. Apex Legends Mobile and PUBG Mobile let me push the settings to the high end of things and performance has been perfect. I'm really excited to be able to have a Pixel phone with all the fun photo and video features that I love from Tensor, but that actually still lets me play video games at a high level as well. Clearly, there's a lot to be excited for with these new phones, and with Pixel 7 Pro keeping the same $899 starting price tag, it's easy to recommend for those wanting to check out the latest big flagship phone from Google. This year, it's all about refinement, obviously, and if these early looks tell us anything, it's that Google has tightened things up where they needed to, and these could be the absolute best pixels yet. But guys, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, head down there, hit that subscribe button, and be sure to ring the notification icon as well if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Until next time, we'll see you.